in London called University of Roehampton. So we are a London-based university. My job here with the university is for recruiting students from China and also other uh, East Asia, Asian countries. And, and, and uh, I'm based in the uh, university main campus in London, uh, where a college called uh, Forbell College, which I'll slightly touch upon later on. So I'm just gonna a quick jump start to the uh, presentation. I have been told, I have been informed, although uh, that uh, uh, all the audiences today, the, you're coming from uh, around the world and working for um, universe, sorry, I think I've just got a, a message from, right. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Wayson. Uh, so I was just gonna say, you know, um, I've been informed uh, right before I'm, uh, I was starting the uh, presentation that there are some audiences from Australia, there are some audiences from other parts of the world, which is great because uh, I hope through this brief presentation, I can, um, you know, thank again for the, uh, for the kind uh, assistance from Yes Education. Um, through this presentation, I hope um, all our partners around the world will have this opportunity to get to know about our university better, okay? So, um, I do have to apologize. Yeah, Hello? Uh, you can go on. I, I will uh, type in some welcome messages and you just uh, can go on. And we will- All right, okay. Always, uh, all right, okay. I, I, uh, I, was, gonna, I, was, I was just gonna say, um, I, do have, I do have to apologize uh, for two things in advance. First is my daughter, um, which you know you might have already know that Britain is still under lockdown. So everybody, including me at the university, are still working from home. So because I'm home based at the moment, everything's happening at home um, are pretty much you know uh, down to the ground. So my daughter, you know, uh, just right outside my. Uh, my study room, so she's tend to be quite uh, agitated in the morning, if you will. So you might be able to hear a little bit cry and you know loud noises, uh, commotions made by my daughter. So I do apologize if you hear uh, you know uh, you know those noises outside. So the second thing I do have to apologize is I'm catching a hay fever at the moment. Hay fever is a common thing in 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 the UK. A lot of people do get it during the summer. So I, I, I tend to sneeze sometimes. If I do sneeze in the midst of our presentation, I do apologize for that uh, disruption caused. Okay, so uh, we're just gonna start with this uh, uh, about one hour. Uh, I hope to control the, the, the length of the presentation within the one hour limit. So I'm just gonna start with this presentation now, okay? And hopefully, every one of you guys can uh, see my screen, right? So right before I'm going to, uh, right before I start to talk about uh, our university programs, our streams, our locations, and things like that, I'm just gonna give you guys sort of an update about the corona situation, coronavirus situation in the UK. I think it's rather important. Uh, as you might uh, already, uh, 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 you know, uh, felt from you know uh, uh, your works, counselling your students. Most of the students and parents alike, they are very concerned about, uh, you know, the uh, you know when when it comes to sending their kids abroad. You know, what's what is the situation with uh, COVID nineteen in that uh, country of destination? So. It is rather important, you know, to give you a bit of a highlight about what's been happening with the uh, university in terms of our reactions to the COVID-19 outbreak. So the first update that I would like to share uh, with every one of you is that in terms of our start date, the university policy um, is very clear at the moment. We are planning to start our uh, 2020 intake as normal. Okay, so there's been some talks about 
you know, especially amongst other uh, British universities. Maybe you've heard news from uh, from University of Manchester, for example, or University um, uh, of Warwick, another university they've been talking about, you know, perhaps, you know, uh, change a little bit of their, you know, policies for 2020 admissions. But with our university, Roehampton, we have not made any significant changes at all in terms of admitting our new cohort for the 2020 September intake. So everything's are still as usual. Having said that, having said that, there might be, you know, at some point that we might have to react rather, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, according to the government guidances to the COVID-19 outbreak, uh, you know, in terms of our uh, admission policies, we might have to twist a little bit. We might have to change our policies accordingly. But as 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 of yet, we have you know these things has not happened. If it happened, if it happens, we will definitely uh, share the uh, um, newly updated policies with our partners. Once again, in terms of our start date, we are planning to start for the 20 and 20 September intake as normal, okay? So that's the first update. The second update is that, uh, although we are planning to start, uh, you know, normally for our new intake, having said that, we are considering the fact that some of our international students, you know, uh, particularly our, our students from China, they might be experiencing, and, and of course some, you know, other, uh, international students, they might be experiencing some uh, travel restrictions imposed uh, upon by their own government in their own countries. So uh, having factored that in, the university decided to sort of, uh, you know, um, clarify our latest enrollment date policy. So I mentioned just now that our normal start date for this year's intake is still uh, September, 21st of September. However, we do have a clear policy for the latest enrollment date, uh, which we allow the students to enroll to the university by uh, no later than 19th of October. Okay, which is good because some of the students, you know, they, they, they might be uh, once once uh, hearing that you know the university will start normal they might be saying hey wait a minute you know i i i you know i i do have you know our visa centers uh, you know has not opened in in our countries i i still have ielts to meet you know my uh, you know um um examinations you know our final uh, the the final date of the uh, you know handing over our thesis has been postponed so which means we do have conditions uh, that are remaining in our office, uh, you know, that we need to meet. So if, uh, you know, for, for that regard, the university has been quite, you know, considerate when, uh, you know, for, for issuing this policy to allow students to enroll our university by no later than 19th of October. Okay, so the third update, and, and also actually the third and fourth update is that we, as a university, we have launched our online English testing and also our online pre-sessional programs, okay? So I'm aware uh, that some of our partners, some of our colleagues are predominantly focusing on the Australian market, which is uh, a market that I'm not really uh, professionally aware of, okay? Or having, you know, professional level of uh, knowledge about but in the UK uh, some of the things that our university uh, do to help some of our international students meet our uh, entry requirement in particular for the language condition is having a thing called um, a program called a pre-sessional program a pre-sessional program is a short term English course which starts right before the degree courses so that students with lower level of um, uh, English uh, well, presumably IELTS uh, scores 
lower than the you know the our, our normal uh, entry requirement for IELTS. They can start that you know short term uh, pre sessional program uh, before they start their degree courses. You know, mostly in in September. So, in order to better enhance their level of English, so that they can you know really catch up with you know the, the rest of the student when they start their um, uh, main program. So by doing so, the students can effectively. I think the the, the, the largest benefit of having uh, you know a pre-sessional program is to help students with lower IELTS level to sort of skip, you know, uh, IELTS effectively uh, uh, and, and, you know, and, and, then, and then to progress to the main program without having to take another IELTS. So that's the main advantage of having the pre-sessional program. Some of my colleagues might heard of it. If you, have, if you deal with, uh, um, you know, UK market, or maybe, I don't know, maybe in uh, most of the Australian universities having similar uh, programs like precessional programs, but called you know in a, in a different way, maybe okay. So um, as our precessional, and also we have our online testing. What is our online testing? So online online English test is sort of um, we don't we, we we've never had this before, uh, which is quite new to our university. You know, it's it's it's, it's an initiative. So we realize as you, as university that a lot of our international students, you know obviously uh, Chinese students in particular and students from elsewhere because of this year's COVID-19 outbreak in the home countries, the IELTS test, uh, the IELTS test centers, excuse me, are you know, all being closed at the moment. Okay, so they can't you know, really take IELTS. For some of the countries that you know, with IELTS centers just uh, started to, uh, to open, the students cannot get the booking because the book, because the booking system you know gets really busy for having to take all those other students who have been waiting to book uh, a test because of the COVID nineteen disruptions that has you know happened. So, with the consideration of that, the university has launched uh, an online English test. So that we can sort of, uh, you know, uh, our own academics can uh, via the online platform to test out um, some of our applicants' English level. If they meet the requirements for direct entry, we have a benchmark which is, you know, sort of uh, mirroring with the um, IELTS uh, marking system. So if we, uh, if our academics through the uh, online testing system, uh, you know, can identify a particular student's uh, level of English is up to standard, will then admit the students directly to our main programs. If they don't, if they fell short, you know, slightly of the level of direct entry, we will then, you know, uh, recommend our, encourage our students to take our online precessional program. Okay, so all these two things, in terms of uh, helping our uh, international students meeting the English conditions and our offers are all being conducted online, which is happening at the moment as we speak. Okay, we've, we've started our 15 week pre-sessional program from last, uh, last Monday. Okay, so we will be starting our second cohort for the 10 week and third for, uh, for, the, uh, for the five week one which I'll slightly attach a pal uh, later on, okay? So that's the uh, update about uh, our pre-sessional and also our online English test. And also as of uh, last week, actually, we started to accept Duolingo, which is quite common, which is becoming, you know, really popular, increasingly, uh, so to speak, amongst a lot of, not only in uh, universities in the UK, but also universities in other countries. I'm sure a lot of Australian universities are now accepting an English qualification uh, called Duolingo English Test, uh, which is really common uh, and popular uh, in, in, in some 
certain countries. We are accepting it now, but only for our pre-sessional program. The reason for that is the university's compliance office is still waiting to see maybe a little bit of evidence is to suggest that you know this test is uh, visa uh, compliant. Uh, so so uh, for that concern, we are uh, at the moment only confining to the acceptance of duolingo uh, English result to our pre-sessional program. Okay, so that's the updates. Sorry, so that's the updates uh, about our university's um, responses, initiatives we have been uh, taken for uh, the for reacting to the COVID-19 outbreaks. So uh, before I start to, to um, sorry, before I start to talk uh, in details about our uh, university, uh, I think I got a question. Yes. Oh, so what I'll do is okay. I do apologize, uh, John Bay uh, Dorji, if I uh, pronounce your name correctly. What I'll do is I'll uh, I'll just continue uh, my presentation um, and perhaps you know uh, going through all the questions. I'll leave about ten minutes or so. Once I finish all the slides, and I'll go through all the questions that you kindly posted on the uh, Q and A uh, chat box, then I'll answer them one by one. If that's okay, because you know that would be better uh, for the for for delivering the presentation's uh, purpose. Okay. So um, yeah, let's just. Um, before I I'll, before I start to talk about our university's strength and advantages in details, and I'll just go through some of the uh, um, well, some of the you know uh, strength really you know that we are really proud of as University of uh, Roehampton. So we are considered we are considered one of the most research intensive modern university. What does that mean? Is that we are a modern university. We are a comprehensive university with a whole wide range, if you will, of uh, programs. But the things that we are really, you know, taking pride of is our research quality, especially for some of our postgraduate programs. I think if uh, some of our uh, colleagues, you know, who might have heard of our university, you might be, you know, um, uh, quite accurately aware of our uh, yeah, of our dance programs, which is really, really one of our you know strong uh, faculties, uh, you know that has won reputation not just in the UK or in the Europe, but around the world. So the reason that our dance faculty is quite strong is because the research programs and postgraduate programs. Uh, within that faculty has won uh, global reputation uh, uh, for the research quality that we have really, um, you know, we have really showcased uh, along the years. So um, apart from that, we have 100, we have 140, uh, you know, different nationalities uh, in the university. At the moment, the total numbers of our students are around uh, 13,000 uh, 13, okay at the moment and, and amongst that within within that number we have uh, you know 14 percent of the percentage of, uh, um, uh, of, of of the total numbers of students are from other countries and uh, like I said across the you know all the international cohort we have at the moment there are 100 and um, 40 different nationalities, okay? Another strength that we are really taking pride of is our location, which I'll, you know, uh, I'll, I've prepared a particular slide for that. So in terms of our location, once again, we are a London-based university, and we're not like, you know, one of those universities. They are claiming they're London University, but they are like, actually, in, in fact, you know, one and a half hour away to London. If, if you actually experienced, you know, the, the actual journey from the campus to the, to the city. But for our university, we are a London-based university. We are based in zone two, you know, 
uh, in, in uh, ah, sorry, we're based in zone three in London, and which really takes about half an hour from our main campus in London um, to the city. Our university is based in uh, somewhere near Richmond Park in, in, in Wandsworth in southwestern London. If you know, you know about London, you know SW Southwest is the most affluent, the most, you know, um, shall we say, uh, economically well-to-do region of not just the kind of not just the uh, city, but also the entire United Kingdom as as a country. So we are based in the most affluent, uh, posh, if you uh, if you uh, if you will, and, and most secured. Uh, uh, parts of the uh, of the country, okay, and uh, an another uh, you know uh, strength that we are very very proud of is our profound history. We have uh, we the university was established back in 1841, right in the midst of the industrial revolution, and we have uh, you know 175 years history. And I have a, 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 you know, a particular slide for talking about our history, uh, which we will uh, have a bit of understanding of our profound and enriched uh, uh, in, uh, heritages, really. Okay, so um, without further ado, let's just, uh, yes, as I've just, uh, as, I, as I've just mentioned, our university is, uh, we are very, very proud of our um, historical heritages, if you will. So the university is, uh, the university was founded back in 1841, right in the midst of the Industrial Revolution. And in fact, we are one, we are one of the oldest universities uh, established in the UK, uh, right after, Cambridge and, and Oxford and also University of London and uh, University of Durham. So right after those four universities that you, I'm sure, you know, are very, uh, you know, uh, familiar with, we are the fifth oldest university in the UK. And in fact, we are the first university in the UK ever established for educating females, for educating females uh, uh, um, back in the, back in, uh, you know, about 100, 170 years ago, okay? So that's one of the things that we are really, really proud of. If you think, you know, uh, some other universities' history, when they were established, their policies for admitting uh, pupils, admitting stu uh, students were you know, male focused. They they only take you know um, uh, they only take you know male students. So as a university back in uh, eight, 1841, when the university was founded, the university was very very uh, uh, proud of its uh, of of the uh, of the uh, shall we say cause uh, that the university the pioneers of the university initiated. Which is really to you know help to elevate the foundation, the level of education of all females across Britain. Okay, so that's a bit of a history uh, uh, information about our um, university. So another thing that we've um, slightly touched upon just now is our location. As I said, the university is located. Uh, in the southwest western region of London, um, near uh, a very famous park called Richmond Park, right here. And the university is just a half an hour journey by tube to the uh, London. Okay, only half an hour. It's not like you know some other London-based university. They are, you know, uh, labelled as uh, a London university, but they are really far from the city, and also very, uh, you know, distinctively different from those city-based 
uh, universities in London. They're based in, right in the city centre, you know, amongst all the chaotic, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, atmosphere, uh, you know, of, of, a, of a capital city. Um, and what tend to happen is our students, you know, they, if they are, you know, dwelled in a very, very modern and, and, and you know, uh, fast paced city, they, they tend to, you know, uh, sidetracked, you know, if they're, you know, just arrived in the UK, they, they tend to be sidetracked by those other things, you know, from away from their study. However, with our university, the advantage we have as a London-based university is that we can offer, uh, based on our uh, location and advantage, we can offer options to our students. So they can choose to, you know, sort of uh, focus on the study because of the environment we, as a campus-based university can provide, we're based in, you know, not right in the middle of the, of the, of the city of London, we're based in half an hour away from, from London in a very beautiful, which I'll share some, some of our campus pictures later on, and then you will have the, the opportunity to view a short video uh, uh, from which you will, you will be able to see our beautiful campus. Really, really, you know, greenery and, and, and leafy, and it's like a huge park. So students can, you know, uh, wholeheartedly concentrate on the study rather than being sidetracked by other, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, distractions that a city, uh, you know, like London might be able to sort of, uh, uh, you know, to, to offer. However, if the students, you know, once they finish the study, they would like to explore further, you know, the city life, you know, of being uh, living in London, they will be able to do so in just half an hour by tube. So, you know, and, and, and having said that, you know, once they are tired from, you know, uh, enjoying their city life, they can easily come back to the campus half an hour to focus, to re recuperate and focus on the study again. So we, we can, we as a very unique London University, we offer that options and other universities can't. Either you are based in the city or you're based in really far away from London and students have to sort of uh, travel uh, you know, uh, uh, for a long time uh, to the city center. We are bl well blended with all of that advantages, okay? So that's our location. And uh, right before I'm, I'm going to uh, start with other introductions about our university, let's have a, let's have a, let's have a rest and then um, watch a video of our university just to understand and, and have a better picture of our beautiful campus and, and some other advantages that University of Rockhampton can offer. Your time at the University of Rockhampton has Actually, let me just make sure, you know, I can, uh, you, 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 you guys can all hear the sounds, okay? Yeah, we can okay. hear the sounds, yeah. Than a beautiful campus. A world of opportunity awaits. Every second at Roehampton is about finding what makes you tick. It's a second to build your skills. A second closer to your future. A second more towards finding a solution. It's one more shot, one more scene, one more friend. It's a discovery made, a life lesson learned, and an act completed. Rehampton is a newfound home, a newfound love, something new to be discovered. It's a second more to enjoy, a second to feel proud, a second to excel, a second closer to your goal. Imagine what you could do at the University of Rehampton. Yes, imagine what you can do at University of Roehampton. I think you can, you can pretty much do a lot, right? So let's continue our presentation. Yes, we've talked about the location and advantage that we as a university um, uh, possess, 
I'm, uh, I, I mentioned uh, in several times our university uh, is based in really famous, well-known park in London called Richmond Park. It's actually one of the largest parks in Britain, only two and four miles to the campus. Actually, you know, in fact, a lot more shorter than that because the, the in fact, our university's campus is sort of like an extension to the park. You know, you, if you have no opportunity to visit our university, uh, our university, which you, you know, all, all of you guys are more than welcome. Um, you'll be able to see that, you know, all the greenery of our university, it does resemble massively like a national park. You know, so it, it is an extension, uh, the university's campus or, you know, the land, the landscape is, you know, in fact, an extension of the, of, of the, of the park. Okay, so that gives you a bit of a, you know, idea of why our university could have such, you know, stunning and breathtaking, you know, landscape, uh, which is really rare amongst a lot of uh, British universities, okay? So uh, I'll just, uh, uh, let's, let's talk about, you know, the uh, four different uh, colleges of our um, university, okay? One thing you might not uh, have, one thing you might not aware is that our university, University of Roehampton, is consisted by four different colleges, okay? So uh, the, 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 one of the colleges is called Fort Bell College, which, uh, which hosts our uh, Department of Dance and Education, and also um, our international office is also based in uh, this college. As you can see, this uh, beauty right here, it's called Grove House. So the international office where I work, well, at the moment I'm working at home, but you know, if, uh, you know, in, 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 in normal times, I'll be working right here. Okay, so this is a Fort Bell College. Uh, once again, it's a, it, it's a place for our Department of Dance and also Education. Okay. And another uh, college, as we, sh um, as we are looking at this slide right now, is a, a college called um, Digby. So Digby Stewart is a slightly a larger college that's the home for our Department of Literature, Social Sciences, Drama and Humanities. And our library is also based in this, you know, beautiful campus, okay? So this is the sort of interior uh, design of our uh, modern library, really beautiful. Uh, reminds me of um, we work, you know, where I used to, uh, where I used to, you know, uh, managing uh, a company at. So uh, very modern, very avant-garde, uh, the design. So the third college that we are looking at right now is called Southland College, okay, uh, which is the home for our Department of Media culture language uh, culture languages music foundation and business school okay and also the foundation really of roehampton university is a college called whiteland in fact when our university was established back in 19 uh, sorry 1841 the university was in fact called whiteland so whiteland as a constituent uh, member college of our uh, university was in fact a pioneering institution of of all the for, uh, of all, uh, of all the colleges really so uh, back in 1841 when the university was established we were a college called whitelands and i mentioned that you know the, when, when we were talking about the history of our university, the university was founded as a female training college for educating teachers. So that was what our university, the, the mission, the initial, the original mission of our university was back in, uh, back, you know, um, almost 200 years ago for educating females. And Whiteland College was 
the foundation of uh, leading academic, uh, you know, you, you know, mission at first. So we were funded, you know, as a, you know, a, a White Lung College back in 1841. Now, as a part of our university, as a part of our modern university, it's a home for our life sciences and psychology, uh, psychology uh, faculties. Okay. So I mentioned that one of the why right when we were talking about the you know advantages you know of our university, I mentioned uh, uh, slightly that you know our university is really proud of our dance faculty which is world renowned okay so if uh, some of our uh, colleagues you know have dealt with you know students who applied for uh, university of Wolverhampton, luckily you might have already you know known that our university is really really reputable for uh, educating uh, and, and, and cultivating nurturing you know dance artists Okay, in terms of the programs, if we have to, you know, go into a little bit details about what are those programs within this faculty that are popular amongst international students. We have a lot of international students from around the world at the moment are studying our uh, bachelor undergraduate level of uh, dance program at our university. So we offer two dance programs at the undergraduate level at Roehampton. One is BA uh, for dance and BFA for dance. So a lot of, you know, colleagues ask me questions. What is the, what is, well, I know BA, BA is, you know, stand for uh, Bachelor of Arts, okay, which is common, the, which is commonly known even in Australia. What is BFA really? So BFA stands for Bachelor of Fine Arts. What's the difference then? You know, it's, you know, the, the both programs with different titles are all for dance, but what is the essential difference between these two programs? The, the essential difference is that as a BFA program, as a Bachelor of Fine Arts program, the program itself is, tend to be more academically intensive in, term, in terms of its uh, artistic uh, education. So a, a Bachelor of Fine Art, you know, you, you might say it is you know, it's, it's it's in terms of the uh, artistic uh, uh, education level is sort of an enhanced version of the BA course, which sort of uh, can be translated into the relatively higher level of entry requirement of a BFA program in comparison to its BA counterpart. Okay, so, you know, in, if, if we have to talk about, you know, um, this program in particular, that would mean if the students wants to apply for a BFA and later I'll be, you know, uh, talking about our MFA, Master of Fine Art, if they want to apply for any programs under that FA title, the university, I'm sure other universities would have similar entry requirement. If they do offer, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, degrees for Fine Art, they would require, you know, more rigidly, you know, on the, portfolio assessment. So the students would have to, you know, provide, you know, much, much higher level of, um, of, uh, of, of quantity of their uh, portfolios. So in terms of, uh, you know, our dance programs, the portfolio will be asking, it's not painting, you know, painting is, you know, we, we understand, you know, a lot of, a lot of university would require 15 to 20 pieces of original works with, you know, their, uh, uh, you know, accompanied uh, uh, 500 word statements. So for the dance programs, the portfolio will be asking from our students would it be a short video. A lot of um, home students, if they're based in the UK, you know, they, they would normally, uh, you know, tend to come to, you know, one of our open days where they will be, you know, auditioned uh, in our university <laughs> uh, dance studios for their, uh, you know, for, for, for the assessment of that 
for, for the assessment of the artistic skills as a potential, you know, uh, dance artist. But for international students, some of the students can't travel to the UK before they start the programs. They will then, you know, uh, record, uh, you know, a sort of uh, eight to 15 minutes, no, no more than 15 minutes, uh, one five uh, uh, length of a uh, uh, video where they, you know, they, they showcased uh, you know, their, their, their dance skills, okay? So normally they, they tend to rent, you know, um, you know, a studio or, you know, if they are a dance student at the moment, you know, they would just, you know, sort of, uh, you know, go into their, you know, uh, classrooms or, you know, their, 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 the studios in their uh, own school to record, uh, you know, that eight to 15 minutes, uh, you know, video so once they've done the recording they, they they can go and upload it to any mainstream doesn't have to be youtube we we know you know rather accurately that youtube is not really you know uh permittable in some countries so we are a, a, able to take you know the portfolio um from any any mainstream you know uh you know uh, video site so in, uh, for our Chinese students, you know, we, 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 we normally ask them, you know, to upload your video onto Youku or, or, um, or Tenshin, uh, Tencent. Uh, if you're from other countries and then you, you know, YouTube is not really your thing, you can certainly upload it, uh, you know, uh, onto, you know, the most popular uh, video uh, streaming sites uh, in your country. So we can, we, we can take it from there. And then once you apply for the program, you just can, you just, uh, you know, um, you know, copy and paste it, the link of your video onto a Word document and upload it to the, you know, uh, to the online application platform. Okay, so that's easy. Having said that, sometimes we do host, you know, audition in um, some other countries, like we've done it, we've done it, you know, new, uh, new, in numerous times. In, in, in Beijing, China, and Shanghai, and also uh, in Hong Kong, with uh, uh, you know, I think our uh, uh, dance faculty uh, has conducted several uh, auditions, overseas auditions before. So you know, our academics will then fly over to those countries to give out uh, auditions if we know there is a certain you know uh, considerable numbers of. Uh, uh, applicants there uh, from that particular uh, country applied for our dance programs and then we can collectively uh, assess their dance skills uh, or potential shall we say. So that's the bachelor program I mentioned about you know the degree of fine arts you know we, we do not only at the undergraduate level we also do a fine art degree at our master's level so as you can see we have our master master uh, sorry master of fine art for choreography what is choreography it is a very distinctively uh, unique type of shall we say art uh, or, or you know or for dance art for dance okay so we all commonly, you know, aware or, you know, heard of that, you know, if you want to learn dance, you, you go and study dance, you know, to be a professional dancer. However, choreography is, is it transcends, shall we say, transcends to educating or cultivating a professional dancer. It is more focused, uh, it, it is more focusing on transforming a professional dancer into a professional dance director or you know you know if we have to put it uh, you know uh, more simply you know a designer for dance okay so not only you can perform you know maybe you know you have already mastered essential skills as a professional dancer from your undergraduate program, but then you've realized, okay, I want to become a director. 
you know, or I have the potential to not only dance, but also to design dance, you know, to create, you know, uh, uh, you know, a piece of uh, uh, dance work, you know, or to choreograph, you know, a group of dancers and direct them to make it, you know, to make it your own work. And choreography is just the program for that type of students. Students who wants to become, you know, not only just dancer, but also a dance artist who directs, who design dance works, okay? So this is the master program that we get lots of applications for because, you know, for two things. One is it's rare. You might have not come across this program before from other universities. Okay, it is rare. And second reason for the popularity of this program is that we are, as I've mentioned, you know, right before, we are a very research focused university. Our research quality is worldly renowned for, for dance in particular. So this program, in terms of the level, of research is is really really high academically you know renowned uh, within the uh, you know within within the you know uh, the circle for educate uh, for dance education in the uk so a lot of students tend to apply for this program as a jumping stone academically onto a high level for becoming a researcher a scientific participants uh, to, 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 race, uh, to conduct further researches on dance. Okay, you might have heard of, you know, from other, uh, you know, from, 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 you know, medias, uh, you know, uh, or scientific reports, uh, yeah, scientists, you know, who are now sort of discovering or exploring the potential medical usages of dance. So people tend to, you know, use dance as a medical uh, intervention to cure some mental disease or, you know, uh, physical disease, uh, that sort of thing. So some of our students, you know, they, they, this, they, they, when, when, once they finish their uh, bachelor degree for, you know, um, for gaining uh, essential skills for, uh, of becoming a dancer, they realize they want to become a different type of person or a, a, a different uh, profession a professional they want to become a researcher but they need a jumping stone so some of the students they take this you know choreography uh, master's program as a jumping stone to become a, a dance researcher having said that we do have you know master of fine art for students who wants to take the normal you know, a relatively normal route, you know, because, because becoming a dancer is not, you know, commonly considered, a, 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 you know, a, a, you know, you know a, a common option anyway. So a lot of students tend to apply for business management, engineering, you know, other programs and things like that. So the dance market is a niche market, so to speak, anyways. But within that, there are some students, you know, you know who, who still wants to sort of uh, uphold to their ambition of becoming a dancer, individual dancer. So we have a, a master's program for that, which is our master of fine art for dance and embodied practice. Okay, so this program really focusing on one student's individual dance skills as a professional dancer. So you might be asking now, what is, are there, different entry requirements between MFA choreography and MFA dance and embodied practice, the A's. You know, so the, the, the most, I think the, uh, the largest difference is that when it comes to the preparation of your portfolio, you are required to submit different type of works. So a lot of uh, students, they, they, they tend to get rejection from 
MFA choreographies because they sort of uh, prepared that wrong type of portfolio. When they submitted the video, when we when we when our admission officers, you know, uh, looked at the video of their students, we can only see, you know, one individual dancer, which is not which is not you know what the admission officer would be expecting from a portfolio, a, re, a, a quantified portfolio for choreography, because choreography tends to you know, um, involves a group of dance, uh, a group of dancers. You know, otherwise you won't be, you know, really called, you know, chore uh, choreograph, uh, choreo a choreograph. Sorry. So, if you submit a solo work, the admission officers would then, you know, feel really strongly that you might be, you know, more suitable for applying for the MFA dance and embodied practice because you know this program's focusing on the individual uh, you know dance skills rather than you know your potentials to direct and design a group of dance uh, a group of dancers all right so so that's that's the you know essential difference so to speak however you know you'll be able to know um, uh, you'll be you'll be you'll be you'll be able to ask for more details when you are you know applying for um, you know our dance programs. We do have other you know dance related programs, but these three are the most popular ones amongst our international students. Having introduced our you know um, well known dance uh, faculty, a lot of people they you know they 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 tend to if they know. Uh, University of Wolverhampton, they tend to, you know, instinctively um, associate the name of Wolverhampton with, with um, dance education. However, what they might not know or heard of is that our universities are also taking pride, you know, on some other faculties that we have, you know, distinctive advantages over you know, other universities in the UK. For example, our history faculty, we are ranked as the fifth, uh, you know, university for history education uh, in the UK. And also, as I've mentioned repetitively, uh, while we were talking about, uh, you know, our university's history, we were funded back in 1841 as a as the first university ever established in the UK for educating female educators, okay, for teaching female teachers. You know. So, for based on that historic uh, historical heritage, we are very uh, you know proud of our education faculty also, which is ranked uh, the twenty second in the UK for the level of education. So, if you go onto our website. And, and, and check, you know, um, in details of our undergraduate programs and also our postgraduate programs, you'll be able to see within that education department page, you'll be, you'll be able to see a long list of education related programs, both for MF or for BA and also for MA. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll have a little bit of, you know, introduction later on about our education uh, faculty. And then apart from these two, we have our sports science, which is also, you know, ranking, which is also ranked, you know, uh, quite, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, high in the UK. So we are ranked in the 24th in the UK for sports science. And also our journalism, we are ranked the, uh, 33rd. Actually, uh, in fact, in one of our uh, former uh, chancellors where, you know, uh, you know, he was actually a well-known uh, journalist for BBC. So while he was our chancellor, he actually, you know, made our uh, journalism uh, faculty rather uh, academically strong in the, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, in, in the UK. So about history, which might not be common, amongst our international students, but still we get a lot of applications, predominantly from, U from the US. So we have a Master of Research program for classics and 
ancient history, which is like, you know, a jumping stone for students who wants to conduct, uh, post, uh, uh, sorry, PhD researches on history. They, before they, they get into that, they tend to take, you know, a master of research program to sort of better prepare their individual uh, research skills. And also we have our, uh, how about MA for Cold War studies? Have you heard of that before? Not really, right? So this is a very niche, you know, program we have within our uh, history faculty. And we have our uh, Master of Art history program. So uh, we talked about, you know, the unique advantage as a university, uh, you know, uh, for having a profound historical heritage for education programs. So our education it, faculty is still, you know, one of our largest faculties uh, within University of Roehampton. We are ranked 22nd for our education uh, programs. So some of the popular programs include MA for early childhood studies. It's not really, you know, um, you know, uh, for, you know, uh, training uh, kindergarten teachers. No, it's more beyond that. It's 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 far beyond that. It's uh, for educating um, professional researchers who wants to conduct uh, further uh, on the study of early childhood, uh, uh, you know, uh, field. So this is the sort of a, a program that can prepare students with that ambitions for. Okay. And we have our Master of Arts for Education, Leadership and Management, and also MA Education Studies. With the Education, Leadership and Management, it tends to get popular across, sorry, I think I'm gonna sneeze right now, you know, um, the hay fever is, come, is kicks in. Well, I'll just uh, try to, you know, sort of uh, contain that. So for, um, for the MA, uh, education leadership and management we tend to get a lot of um, applications sorry across students who are coming from other uh, academic backgrounds okay so it's kind of like a conversion course you know if you don't if you if, if for, for those uh, students who have not studied educations before or wants to become you know a professional in the education industry, uh, I think you know. Very good example is that you know I used to have a student from China, you know, who was who was actually on our dance program. You know, she was studying you know a BA BFA uh, dance, and, and 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 then all of a sudden she realized you know, uh, or you know heard from someone back home back in China that there is you know a market for you know. For, for uh, sort of, uh, you know, running uh, individual dance studios, you know, to educate, you know, uh, kids, you know, uh, uh, to become, uh, you know, um, to prepare the dance skills, you know. It's kind of like training school. So, so she heard from someone that there is a potential market for that. But she realized that, you know, she, she, she's not really, she doesn't really have that sort of skills to teach. You know, because she's, 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 um, she's been, uh, you know, spending all her time on learning of becoming a dancer. And then she, and once she realized that there is a program within our university for uh, converting those students from irrelevant dance unrelated, uh, dance unrelated, sorry, uh, uh, education, uh, you know, uh, education unrelated backgrounds into uh, professionals in the education industry. So she, you know, she 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 went. She then went on and to apply and, and study. You know, uh, fortunately, of this program. So this is a very good example. You know, MA education leadership and management is for those students who have not studied educations or from other. Uh, you know, unrelated um, academic backgrounds to convert themselves into becoming a professional educator. 
okay? However, your personal statement has to be outstanding. You have to really lay out your, what is your ambition really? What has inspired you, you know, that you want to become, you know, an educator? So in terms of our sports science, we're ranked in 24th in the UK, and the popular programs include um, Master of Science for Sport and Exercise Nutrition, and Bachelor of uh, a BA for Sports Management, and Bachelor of Science for Sport and Exercise Sciences. And also our journalism, which is ranked 23rd, we have our Master of Fine Art, uh, sorry, Master of Art for Journalism, so much for Master of Fine Art, right? And uh, MA, Media and Communication Culture, and Bachelor of Art for Journalism. So one thing I need to mention is that for our journalism program, if our international students wants to apply, especially for this Master of uh, for this uh, master's program, they need to have really high IELTS grade. We require IELTS 7 if the student wants to, you know, study our master pro master's program for journalism. Okay, obviously we do have our pre-sessional program, you know, we, if, if, if the students, you know, doesn't want to take IELTS, we have our internal test online. These are all available and I presume will be available next year and many years to come really. Another advantage I'd like to share with all our colleagues here today is considering the fact, once again, considering the fact that University of Roehampton is a London based university. We're based in, you know, one of the most expensive cities in the world. Considering that, and look at our tuition fees, and it could go as cheap as £1,345 for undergraduate. And, and, and also for our postgraduate program, they can go as cheap as 14,000. 14k to 15k and our MBA program you which you get you know a uh, three month uh, guaranteed work placement it's only 15 you know 15 uh, 15k considering that and then you compare with if you are aware of other how much other UK universities regardless locations you know Let's say, you know, those universities who are not based in London, you know, based in somewhere in a, vill in a village. I shouldn't be saying that, but some, some, some parts of the UK, I've never been to Australia. I hope one day I'll have a chance to go and visit. But I know Australia, you know, is, is, in, enjoys its massive land. Okay, UK is tiny. So some of the cities is like, a, a, you know, perhaps a village in Australia or in China. Some universities, a lot of UK universities are based in those, uh, those places. So, so those universities, without naming who they are, they charge normally around 17 to 18K, right? They don't have the location of advantage as we have, but they charge more than we do, okay? So we have the, you know, in terms of the cost, this is, you know, uh, which I would say, you know, uh, you know, one another unique uh, uh, advantage we as University of Roehampton has over many, many other universities. You know, I, I often talk about this, you know, to a lot of international students from working class backgrounds, you know, when, as soon as the head of uh, University of uh, University of Roehampton is a London University, so they sort of, you know, step back a little bit, right? They sort of step back a little bit, you know, they step back further. They're like, hey, wait a minute. I don't really have the budget for, for going to London, you know? I, I really cherish the fact that you guys, you, your, your university is based in London, but I don't have the pocket for that, right? 
and I and I would just you know tell them reassure them don't worry about wait a minute let's have a look at our tuition fees and later you know as I would do you know today with this special occasion to showcase how cheap our our accommodate accommodations can be so once they looked at our tuition fees they were like wow this is blowing my mind this is cheap it's cheaper than you know other universities based in you know some up, some other parts of the uh, of the kingdom like wells okay he or she might not wanting to go to wells because what is you know what you know they i don't i don't want to say anything bad well it's a very remote part of uh uh, you know, in 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 the in, in the UK, it's a remote part of the country. They might they might not want to you know go there, but it's cheap. You know, the tuition fee is like you know thirteen thousand in Wales, and about that in in Scotland, some other parts of uh, some other some some cities in Scotland. You know, some university in Scotland they they charge quite cheap uh, tuition fees as well. But then we look at our tuition fees are like. Oh, it's not much different. It's not much different from from those other remote, you know, uh, uh, region-based universities uh, tuition fees. So I can spend the equal amount of money, but studying in London, the capital city of uh, of uh, of the uh, of the UK. Why not? So that's normally their reaction, you know. Once they, you know, they initially backed off like that, you know, but then they, they would come back to me, you know, and jump over and say, you know, I want there, I want to go there, I want to go to London. It's value for money, you know. And then I said, hang down a, little, a minute, let's have a look at our accommodations. One thing I must proudly share with all of you today is that. Our accommodation, all of our accommodations are managed, built and managed, maintained by the university. We don't go through a third party. Once again, if you know UK universities well, very, very rare, very, very, very few universities, they have their own accommodations on site. Not many, not, not many of them have that. Why? Because UK, once again, is a tiny land. It's not as massive as Australia. It's tiny. So every piece of land, every, every inch and acre of land is very expensive. All right? Take London, for example. Take London, for example. If you don't have if you don't have 400K, right, for, you know, for a normal semi-detached house on the market, you know, it's normally priced 400 to 600K. It's that expensive. In comparison, I used to live in Manchester, you know, an industrial city in uh, the second largest city in the UK. And we used to have a house in Manchester, right? And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a three bedroom right in the city center. You know, the market value was 200K. So that's the, that's the comparison. Okay. So long, so London in particular is really expensive. However, we can make our accommodation as cheap as what you can see right now. You might not even believe your eyes. You might not even believe what you what you're seeing right now. It's 115 pounds per week. 115 pounds per week times by four. One month you spend about 460 pounds. Bills included, your internet included, and you don't have to share. It's not bunk beds, you know. Once you hear the word, some of the students say, "Wow, do I have to share my bedroom?" It's like you know bunk bed. No, it's not. It's not like you know, some American universities. You have your own privacy. You have your own bedroom. You have your own bathroom. 
and it's cheap. The reason it's cheap is that I think it's not, it's, you know, one thing is that we, we as a university, we, we, we are, you know, we want to be more, you know, inclusive. We want to, we want to, you know, students from more income backgrounds, you know, to come and study, you know, at our university. Another thing is that because we manage, we build all those accommodations on site, we manage those accommodations, not through a third party, not through the agents, you know, things like that. The price can be cheap. We've reduced a lot of cost that we don't have to spend. So 460 pounds, let me remind you, when I went to university in the UK 10 years ago, when I went to university in the UK 10 years ago, in a small village, I don't want to say, I don't want to say, you know, where I, I, I go, you know, because I still, you know, love my, uh, you know, um, you know, the university I went to, right? But in terms of that, I went to a university in a small village 10 years ago, and I spent just about £460 per month on my accommodation. And that was the price 10 years ago. And now you look at, a London-based university in 2020 is still, is still charging the similar amount of accommodations that I spent 10 years ago in a small you know, university. This is amazing. It is amazing fact, right? And all bills included, you know, with your own bedroom, It's on the campus. It's on the campus. Okay. So as you can see, this is the basically, you know, the entire the map of the entire uh, uh, Roy Hampton campus, and all those locations marked with uh, the red icons are our on-site accommodations. Okay, so if you look at, I mentioned about, you know, our university is consisted by four colleges. So if you look at all the, uh, you know, where the four colleges are, and you can see in each college, in each college, we have accommodations. So the advantage for that is that no matter you are a dance student or you are, you know, say business students or you studied you know some other programs and then you know you have to go to different campuses you have to different you have you have to you have to go to uh, different colleges for your lectures you know and you don't have to travel far your how your accommodation can be based where you will be studying Nothing better than that, right? Five minutes away from where you live to your lecture hall. And then you can even take a nap if you, if you want to, because I know, you know, uh, nap taking is a culture in some countries in, a, uh, in, in the, in the uh, early afternoon, right after you finish the morning classes, you can even come back to your dorm, you know, and take a, take, take a, uh, you know, a nice nap. And then, you know, regroup, rejoin your class, right? Other universities can't do that. And when I, certainly when I was a student back, uh, you know, in, uh, 10 years ago, I remembered from where I lived to where, to, the, to where the university was, I had to travel half an hour by foot to the, uh, you, know, to, to, you know, to my lectures, right? But with all our, University, we have 2,000 rooms available within Roehampton, okay, which is far efficient to accommodate most of our international students. You know, home students, they tend to live outside of the campus, so which gives uh, a lot of international students, you know, the uh, you know, advantages, opportunities of enjoying our, camp, uh, our campus based accommodations. So it's, it's sufficient, we can accommodate, you know, most of our international students on site, okay? So let's, uh, I'm conscious of the time here, so let's just quickly, you know, um, 
uh, go through you know, some other slides. So in terms of our general entry requirement, we have, um, so, so for the undergraduate, I, um, I, I, do, I do have to apologize, you know, here I've only prepared for the, uh, for the Chinese students entry requirement, uh, you know, um, for our university programs, which is my oversight, I should have included, you know, other regions as well. I do, I do apologize, you know, because I'm aware some of our colleagues are based in other parts of the country, uh, other parts of the world. So, uh, so basically, um, you know, for the, the entry requirement is, you know, rather uh, flexible. All right, for the, you know, uh, undergraduate, uh, you know, we, you know, uh, we used to require a foundation program that student has to go through, you know, one year foundation, but we are not requiring that anymore. So if you are from a certain country, say, for example, when you're applying for, you know, um, UK university, and, you know, that university normally requires your students to go through a foundation year, but with Greyhampton, we are, you know, um, you know, we, we do not require that. As long as that student in your uh, country has achieved the sufficient level of qualification to enter a university undergraduate program in your country, in your country. So I'm saying this, you know, for the, uh, in terms of the academic requirements. If they have that, if they have, uh, you know, satisfied that, you know, sort of uh, condition, we mostly, we most likely can take them, okay? So if they are, you know, if they have met the entry requirement to enter a university in his or her home country, mostly we can, uh, you know, take the students onto our undergraduate programs under the condition if they meet and the IELTS entry requirements okay for master it's you know more uh, uh, it's you know more or less the same we're very flexible so I think in other countries your uh, marking scheme is really based on uh, GPA you know, rather than the percentage like you know students from China do so uh, again you know for most of our master's programs we can take students from GPA of 2.4 to GPA uh, 2.8, and I believe it's GPA out of uh, out of five, out of the total grade of five, uh, that we can take them onto, you know, our master's program. Okay, and also for the MBA programs, uh, we used to have, you know, the requirement you know, for work experiences, but we don't have the, you know, the requirement anymore. So you might have come across some of the uh, MBA programs offered by uh, some other British universities. They are requiring students to have essential two years managerial work experiences. But with us, we do not require that anymore. However, the student has to, you know, uh, sort of uh, lay out a, a very clearly uh, within his or her personal statements as to why the student uh, wants to apply for MBA. Okay, in terms of IELTS, for the undergraduate level, you know, the IELTS requirement is very standard, you know, 6.0 with no less than 5.5 all across. And for masters, I've mentioned that, you know, for some of our programs like, you know, journalism, we require seven, but most of our other programs, you know, 6.5 will do the job okay but with no less than 5.5 in each section and for mba uh, program the ios requirement is the same 6.5 5.5 no less than 5.5 all across okay so um as i said you know from this year uh, we are now accepting duolingo uh, english test so I've, I, I reckon um, most of uh, our colleagues here today understand and you know have heard of Duolingo and you know you understand accurately you know the advantages of uh, Duolingo English test so well you know you can take the test it's online you can take the test anytime anywhere you know, like what they have uh, what they have advertised on the website 
on, on, on students, you know, normally finish the test within an hour and then, you know, um, within two to five working days, the students can get the test. So now all our pre-sessional program, all our pre-sessional programs at University of Roehampton, we can take dual English results. Okay, what's the requirement? So for the, if, you, if the applicant is applying for undergraduate or withholding, you know, our undergraduate offer, and then the students uh, get 75, 75 to 80, with that grade, uh, we can take the students onto our 10 week program. And if the grades are higher at 85 to 90 level, we can take the students onto our five week program. But if the students are applying or withholding offers from our postgraduate programs, we can, uh, and then, you know, the student has the grade for within 85 to 90 region, we can, we can take the students onto our 10 week program. And, you know, subsequently, if the student has 95 to 100, you know, uh, mark region, we can take the students onto our five, sorry, so, sorry for the typo, onto a five week program for postgraduate students and that's duolingual. We do have our you know, own online English test, which we cooperate with um, Oxford International. And just a bit of information very quickly about our online English test. A lot of you know, students tend to ask me, you know, I, you know, see, duolingual is great, you know, I can take it and then well, the, the, the disadvantage is that, you know, only the pre-sessional programs takes Duolingo. I want a direct entry. I'm confident with my English level. I want a direct entry. So if you want to enter to our university directly for our, you know, no matter our undergraduate programs or our postgraduate programs, the online English testing we are taking is our own online English test, which you can book and then, uh, you know, um, make the application and book the test via, you know, the uh, website on uh, Oxford International. Don't worry, I will share the screen. I will, sorry, I will share the slides with uh, ES Education Partners uh, once I finish uh, today's uh, presentation. So you can uh, take our online test for directly entering into our degree programs. And the question is, what is for? What is our online uh, test for? I think the primary reason for having these online tests is to help our students, you know, to effectively skip IELTS. You know? So they don't have to take IELTS again if they meet the, you know, the, the direct entry requirement to our degree program, so our precession accord as well. And also students, you know, with offers, if conditions, one of the conditions is meeting the IELTS uh, requirement or English requirements, they can use that result, our online test result, to fulfill their offer conditions. As I've said before, our precessional programs can't accept, you know, students uh, who has taken uh, you know, uh, we, our, our precession programs can accept, you know, our online test result. Okay, say for example, students, you know, who took our test only get, you know, IELTS equivalent 5.5, and then we can say, hey, don't worry, we can take it, we can put you onto our 10 week pre-sessional program. And if you pass the pre-sessional program, they test out the students at the end of the program, but you know, uh, a lot more easier, uh, as long as you can be punctual and, and then attend, you know, um, our classes, most of our students will get passed, okay? So for, um, you know, our online test, our pre-sessional programs can take the, you know, the result of our online test. So um, who, can, who can book, you know, who, what kind of students are eligible to book our online test? So first of all, you need to understand that, you know, this test is only for non-EU international students. If you're from, uh, you know, countries like China, if you're from, you know, say, 
uh, you know, Indonesia, if you're from Malaysia, if you're from, you know, India, you are able to take, you know, our test because you are non-EU internationals, okay? However, having said that, one of the preconditions, which is really important and you need to bear in mind is that, you know, it does not open to everybody, even though you are non-international, the, 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 the precondition is that you need at the moment uh, holding a conditional offer from Roy Hampton, which means you must have, you know, applied first you know, for the main program. So we do not take any student who does not have, you know, an application or an offer with university. Okay, so if you, ha if you have applied, say, for example, uh, MA translation program, and, and, and you know, you get the conditional offer on which you are required to get IELTS 7.0, right? But you don't have the IELTS result because you cannot take IELTS in your home country. You can go on to book the test. But we, and and, and whilst, whilst you're applying for the online test, you know, you will be asked to put into your um, university reference number on your offer letter. If, without doing that, the test would not be able to take you. All right? So you have to be, first and foremost, you know, an international student from a non-EU country, and then you must be an applicant, an existing applicant with an offer letter. All right? So, that's the online English test. Uh, that's, that's what our online English test is uh, for. And then just slightly talk about, you know, what are included, you know, some of our students will, you know, they always ask me, hey, so Kaka, really, you know, what is your online English test, you know, uh, included? What, what does, uh, what does, you know, what sort of, um, you know, uh, what does it test, you know? Um, uh, what sort of skills your online English test uh, you know, examines. So really, it's really similar to IELTS, okay? It's, it, it, you know, it, 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 it's really for examining the students, you know, level, uh, level of listening, speaking, reading, and writing, very similar to the, you know, all familiar IELTS. And also, what is the structure within your test? Yes, it's similar to IELTS, you know, but does it structured, does your online test structured the same with IELTS? It's different, okay? Simple as that, it's different. So we have two sort of structures within, you know, our uh, own test. So the first thing that the students will have to uh, go and uh, complete is once they, you know, booked their test online, once they book the test online, the first thing that they will have to complete is an initial test. It's a, it's a, it's a sort of like a warm up. It's a, it's a warm up uh, sort of uh, uh, test, okay? And the marks of the initial test, uh, you know, does not really occupy a huge part of the final uh, uh, assessment. So it's, it's basically, a, you, know, a, 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 you know, a small test just to help the students getting into, you know, the exam, you know, the exam situation. Okay, so basically, you know, the students will be tested out uh, for their listening, speaking, write, uh, reading, and writing during the uh, small initial test. And right after the initial test, in another date, that's one thing that you have to remember: all the three uh, tests, all the three steps, does not happen within one day. Okay, students, you know, they will book the online test and they will be asked to book the test again. They will be asked to pick a date for the writing test and then their speaking test, so on and so forth. Okay, so for the writing test, you know, once the students uh, completed the initial test. If you have, if you haven't completed it, the the initial test, you cannot proceed to the next uh, stage of your test. So once the students completed their initial test, they go on, you know, book the writing test. The writing test will then be conducted on the platform, on the on the on the internet uh, platform. Okay, it's web based. The, the student has to type out 
you know, the, the answers, okay? You know, it's normally an essay, a short essay that students have to write within the limited time frame. And after the writing test, the students will then pick a date, uh, you know, for participating the final oral English tests. Okay, so it will be live recorded. Sorry, it will, it will be a live video with one of our examiners from, from, our, uh, from our university, with one of our academics, okay? And the students will be required to turn the camera, to turn the camera on because the test, uh, the examiner has to verify the true identity of the test taker. So the student will definitely have to turn the camera on and make sure the students can spin the camera 360 degrees. So that would require some external camera to be installed just to make sure the examiner, uh, the reason for that is the examiner wants to make sure that no one else are sort of, you know, in the room where the students take the test to help out the students, you know, uh, you know, in any ways really, you know, unfairly. So that's the uh, structure of our test. Once the students completed the test, the students will then not, will then get in their you know uh, result within five working days. Okay, if they satisfy their you know uh, English conditions, the students will get a new condition offer with that English condition be removed. Okay. So five working days, normally shorter than that, but just to put everything on safe side, you know, you'll, you know, tell your students, it takes about five working days. So, um, uh, how, just, uh, you know, if, if, if our colleagues wants to make new applications, again, uh, for our undergraduate program, that's one thing you need to be aware of. We do, we do not require any international students to make their undergraduate applications via UCAS, okay? Uh, I'm sure, you know, most of us, uh, most of uh, our colleagues know about UCAS. It's, it's rather, it's a pain, right? Sometimes when the students, you know, submitted five applications, or the students wants to, you know, sort of uh, add more options, you can't, you know, because UCAS have a, you know, a cap on the numbers of applications you can, you can submit. This is not a case with our university. We can take any international students' applications out of the UCAS requirement, right? So the students can submit without going through UCAS. How to do that? The students, you know, can simply go onto our online application platform where to find it very easy. So if you want to apply for a particular program, you go onto our website, you go onto our and a university website and you find that particular program the students want to apply for or you want to apply for your students right under I think at the bottom of the page or uh, you know uh, lower lower you know half you know of the page you will be able to see that application icon so if you click that you will then be directed to a different app uh, different uh, web uh, uh, portal where you need to fill in your details okay your students details how to pay obviously you know we can take all the students you know to choose payment online if the students doesn't want to you know, pay online for example uh, you know um, some students that do not have their own credit card uh, or they do not use visa card so um, you know we can take the students you know uh, the students can wire the money the students can wire the money in, you know, into our university's accounts. So where to find the account details, simple. You go onto that, you know, uh, this website here, and you will be able to, you know, view, you know, all the payment details available there. 